for Wall Street Media. This is Marley. I'm here with Doug, and we'll help you make money in the stock market with information you can't get anywhere else. Exclusive stuff. That's sweet. We've done these guys like three times we in the last couple weeks. We have. I've quite a bit. Yeah. Hopefully Tyler question. hasn't offended them too much. We have, we have video. something usable. Hopefully here. Tyler hasn't offended them too much as he's offending us right now. We have James McGeever. He's the CFO of NetSuite. Their ticker is N. Discusses their new product, the NetSuite One World, for managing a global business without any complexity. He also announces the NetSuite One World Software Company Edition. Here it is. So one product we just announced in April is One World. So if you think about a company managing this hairball of applications in a single country, well now they start going international. And one of the things that's happening with globalization is companies are going international much earlier than they did in their, than they may have done in their previous life cycle. So now you set up three subsidiaries around the world. Well, each one of these subsidiaries has got the same hairball of applications. And I said, I used to run an IT department, and it's exactly what we had. We had different accounting in the UK, different accounting in Japan. And then they have to tie these all together. Typically, typically what they'll do is either have a data warehousing solution or they'll have a consolidation tool. Well, it doesn't stop there, because now you get into regions. Now you have your EMEA region, APAC, and, and this hairball just gets exaggerated and even small companies, we have one pretty fairly small company that is implementing 40 subsidiaries on NetSuite. Suddenly because smaller companies have more complex legal structures than most people realize. Even today, even before the introduction of One World, about 20% of our customers had multiple subsidiaries that they would use, multiple instances of NetSuite to run their product. So when you get the regions, it just becomes even more complex. And this is what the large enterprise went through, and they would pay literally anywhere from tens to hundreds of millions of dollars to Oracles and SAPs in this world to try and solve that problem. Well, with NetSuite One World, what we enable companies to do is to run multiple subsidiaries in a single instance of NetSuite. I can have a Japanese web store, it completely localized in Japanese, an order placed in yen, and in real time when the order is placed, it will show up on my US dashboard in dollars using today's exchange rates. All exchange rates we updated automatically every day. So then on, and it's not just accounting, it's not just a P&L consolidation, it's also one world CRM and e-commerce. Multiple localized websites, multiple quotas, forecasts on your CRM side, and then also your P&L consolidation on the back end. So what you get with One World on the local side is local currency, taxes, quota, forecast. You have different partners, different languages. I can be in this one instance in the US, logging in, everything's in dollars, everything's in English. I change my role, I log in into a German role, my UI is now changed completely into Euros and into German language. Again, all completely within the same instance of NetSuite. And then on the global side, you get consolidation, you see your sales numbers worldwide, real time, you get dashboards, currency management, etc. Hey, and now we have some super cool stuff. This was awesome. Um, video game panel, and we've got somebody on from Electronic Arts, Sony, THQ, the guy who founded Atari, and yeah, from our, Wild Banjo. Yeah, our clip is Noah and Bush now. my favorite analyst in North America, Michael Pachter from Wedbush Morgan. Owns stocks, super smart guy. Charming guy, right? Charming guy. Very Love this. charming guy. I like this bastard. He owns stocks. He comes out and says things. We like him so much. Doug has a post-it note of his name right here. And it's so been there it, right? for weeks. <laughs> right. Because, because he loves him. Own stocks. How about that? Mm -hmm. Instead of owning mutual funds or municipal twist, bonds, right? right? He yeah. was in Twist. Um, Wall Street transcript for you civilians. Um, and... Uh, when like uh, Blockbuster and Circuit City were doing the deal, came out with comments that day rather than issuing a research note 73 years from now. Mm -hmm. You know that's what analysts are supposed to be freaking doing is giving you up to date information that helps you in the real time. And I haven't met him in person. Okay, he's not buying me any drinks. We'll I'm just telling him. you what I think. We're going to find um, him. Tyler will track him down because he's a creeper. <laughs> I'm just telling you what I think. Yeah. I like this guy, and this was a great panel. Uh, the one guy's the guy, the founder of Atari. Yeah, Nolan. And Bennett Pong, I think. Super cool stuff. As Doug said, it's Nolan Bushnell. He's the founder, chairman, and CEO of Uwink. Their ticker is W U K I. And he's the guy that Michael Pachter, he's an analyst with Wedbush, called the inventor of the video game. He created and founded Atari. That's got Chuck E. Cheese is And Chuck E. Cheese. I had many a birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese right? when I was little. Yeah, and what last he's. Last week? What, yeah, last week. 
what he's done is he intertwined these two ventures with you, Wink, which yeah. he talks about in the clip. And he also talks about where he sees the future of gaming. And Nolan, I, I, I'm going to change the question a bit for you, but the, the social aspect of what you're talking about with you, Wink, I think is fascinating. And most of us think about social networking where each participant is alone in a room, networking with other people who are alone in a room. And you somehow have centralized that so the people all get in the same room, which sounds quite novel to me, actually socially interacting with other people. Uh, through games, but but please go describe. Well, it. also don't forget that I'm monetizing it through hamburgers, so uh, you know, and, and cocktails. So we we've, we've got a slightly different model here, um, and you know, I've always said a drunk with a credit card is a beautiful thing. Um, but uh, wait, wait, how many of you are drunks with credit cards? <laughs> the the casual game space and the social game space are sort of two different sides of a, of a, of a growing future coin. Um, I believe that the, there will be a third platform in the, in the living room of the home, which will be a uh, surface technology coffee table, which will become the board game player of the future. Probably not going to happen for six to eight years in any kind of real quantity. It started sort of start out like the home theater kind of thing. But 93% um, of all board games are purchased by women for the hearth experience of the family, sitting around, interacting together. I believe that that is a natural thing that is going to persevere, and that uh, as the technology comes down in price, I believe that that coffee table will, in fact, be a gaming surface. Um, so we, we believe that we will understand that market very, very well and be able to monetize that. But more than that, in the casual game space, there's a couple of very important inefficiencies. First of all, if you go to Asia or Korea, you don't have to have a credit card. You can buy these little gift cards at the local 7-Elevens, things like that. Um, in the U.S., we really don't have that infrastructure to the same extent. And I believe that to the extent that we could, that would be great. I know that uh, for a while, there were – my uh, my wife would never give my kids a credit card. Of course, I would never give my kids a credit card uh, to go for online. And that was the reason – and the reason was is that the um, the credit card user was abused. There were many game sites and things like that which were like – that were like roach motels. You could, it was easy to get in, but you just couldn't get out. Uh, and, you know, we, um, we found that even canceling a credit card, there were ways that people punched through with that monthly billing cycle. And so after you go through that a few times, people – are very reluctant to give their kids a credit card. And until that is really fixed, I believe the market will fundamentally be half or a third what it could potentially be. Super smart guy. Super smart. You know, that's what we always say is what's the management team? What's the management team? What's the caliber of the management team? Okay, this guy's got like the world record, uh, uh, track record, yeah. right? Atari and Chuck E. Cheese, right? Um, Unbelievable. I, I love the U Wink concept. I'm going to look into it a little bit. It's 7 o'clock here for you civilians. Um, the market's closed. But I'm going to take a look at this and see about buying into that. And I'm also going to contact them. I, I think the idea for this with all touch screens and being able to order and take care of everything from that and also like some casual gaming and stuff, I think that sounds like a great time, you know. Um, German, a little bit like remote lounge, you know. Yeah, with that built yeah, into that. every Microsoft table. You know, well, Microsoft has it, but it's just like, you know, put your cell phone on. I think the only ones using it now are AT&T. Yeah. This, you run the whole restaurant from it. Like, you can order what you want and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, like, some casual gaming built into it, and there's, like, some social networking yeah, built into it. So it's when you're sitting at a Tyler, so well at when bars, you're sitting at a table, no Tyler can be at another table and be playing. Stalking with, me I love you. Thing, I love yeah. you, table 47. <laughs> Did you miss our live show? Tyler earlier confessed he had a crush on me. And it was cute, but a little sad. <laughs> Tyler's crying behind this the is camera. A, this was a great panel with some great guys, and I really like the Ewing concept. Mm -hmm. And I, I like it as a company and as a staff. <laughs>
You know? How about that, Mari? How about that? How hey, about some notes? How about we're, we're matching? How about that? People are going to think we're twins. Um, Weird. We're definitely twins. Look. <laughs> We even have the same mannerisms. <laughs> do you have notes for us? Oh, I do. Will you stop horsing around? I can't help it. Marley. And we have Terrence McGill. He's the president of Enbridge Energy Partners. Their ticker is EEP. Spoke about the $2.1 billion pipeline from Superior, Wisconsin to Chicago, which will be completed by early 2009. And after that, they'll begin the $1 billion Alberta Dipper expansion project, estimated to have its first full operational year in 2011. Would you like another? Choppy chop okay. over there. Jonathan Whitworth, he's the president and CEO of OSG America. Their ticker is OSP. Spoke of their 11-vessel increase that will take place over the next four years, giving them a significant advantage over the competition given that 83% of their fleet are double-hauled, well ahead of the schedule of the Federal Order 2015 deadline for all ships to be as such. I <laughs> wrote that one too, didn't I? I'm good. Probably. We also have Yaniv Ariely. He's the CFO of SEVA Incorporated. Their ticker is CEVA. Discuss the use of their technology in all Blu-ray DVD players, as well as in one of the most popular handset multimedia devices. I'm not even going to say which one I do. Yeah, gonna, you go ahead. You're going to get upset. It's the iPhone. Yep, go ahead. Nokia, Samsung, Sony, Ericsson, and LG also use SEVA. It's okay, Doug. Um, <laughs> thus giving the company a solid position in the handset market. Want my last one? I do. Okay, we have Bobby Yazdini. He's the founder and CEO of Saba Software. Their ticker is SABA. Talked of an October 08 release for their learning management system. He also relayed that the majority of the Navy fleet, as well as other armed force networks, domestically and globally run Saba Software. Why is everybody laughing? You're very <laughs> funny, Marla. Um, what else do you have for us? I have nothing for you because everyone is laughing at me, and I don't <laughs> know why. You're just funny, Marla. You're just very funny. Um, Did you change the screen behind me or no. something? We have the National Association of Publicly Traded Partnerships, which people can see where? WSW.com slash webcast slash NAPTP. Look at you. And no one even told me that one. <laughs> Look at you. I just make these things up as I go along. Oh, man. They're doing miracles. Oh, is it 12 minutes? Would you stop messing around? I said I didn't have any more for you. I was trying to choppy pull choppy you in. Choppy choppy, done. You want all these? Yeah. How Are many you is sure? There? There's like six. There's six. Choppy chop. Kimberly Dang, the vice president and CEO of Kinder Morgan Energy Partners, their ticker's KMP, spoke about the factors leading to the new business. Stop it. Doug's imitating me. <laughs> <laughs> new business opportunities, including increases of renewable fuels, growing crude production in Canada, and large increases in natural gas production, for which three new projects are in production, including construction on a pipeline from Colorado to Oklahoma. We also have John Gibson. Doug, I'm going to <laughs> He's the president and CEO of One Oak Partners. Their ticker is OKS. Spoke about the $1.2 billion worth of internal growth projects underway through 2009, including a 760-mile, $535 million pipeline from Kansas to Wyoming and a 115-mile, $277 million pipeline in Green Bay that began May 1st and expects to be done in 2009. We have John Eckel. He's the CEO of Capano Energy. Their ticker is CPNO. Spoke about the current $140 million project taking place in Texas, the Colorado Rockies, and Oklahoma, the latter of which has 3,700 oh, miles of pipeline already in place and a 65% expansion of the Pandan plant in the works. We also have Jamie Buzzkill, the Senior Vice President and CFO of Boardwalk Pipeline Partners. Their ticker is BWP. Spoke about the many of its company's checks and expansions, including a $750 million, 112-mile pipeline, a $1.7 billion, 357-mile project to be done by 2010, all for which they've raised an estimated $4.7 billion in expenditures. We also have the president and COO of Atlas Energy Partners, their ticker is ATN. Richard Rubber spoke on the company's projects in the 516,000 acres it owns in southwestern Pennsylvania, specifically Marcellus Shale, in which its gathering system of 1,600 miles will accommodate the 150 new wells to be done by quarter one of 2009. And lastly, we have Curtis Anastasio. He's the president and CEO of New Star Energy Partners, their ticker is NS. Spoke about the multitude of ongoing and prospective projects ranging from a $50 million project just completed in Amsterdam to projects in New Jersey, Louisiana, and that's all. The new pipeline and terminal construction is to cost $500 million. You are the greatest reader ever in the history of the universe. I deciphered through all that, too. Did you know that like special capital and letters trans, and, and things that were wrong? And <laughs> oh, my God, you know the first? Oh, where did that one go? I want to see.
That was that was fantastic. Andy was at this one um, and, and said that uh, it was packed with people, right? Mm -hmm. These guys, they've got to be printing money, right? All the limited partnerships and LLCs, right? Because... Uh, you know, with, with, with gas at what it is, you know, all those projects that before you couldn't do now are all viable, mm -hmm. right? And the existing projects that you have are just like so uber profitable. Can you imagine? These are things that you did when oil was $25 or $40 a barrel. And now we're in disaster land. I got super rid of my fantastic. Car. You did? You sure you talked to me? We're going to open an ethanol business. Um, and what are you going to do with my. Oh, uh, it's 15 minutes. SUV. 15 minutes we're going for. What's that? A gas guzzler? No, it, it works. You can run on ethanol. Well, it's gone now. You get it back. Um, all right, all right. That's 15 minutes. Well, we're here every day at Wall Street Media. You can find us at WSMCO.com. Thanks for joining us. That was a lot, though.